we can start with pub public participation. We call the meeting to order. Does anybody have any comments? Would you like to speak? I guess a quick one. I'm curious if anybody was able to catch the Mass DEP webinar the other day on reuse and repair and updates with what they're doing in COVID. It's interesting because they had, uh, hopefully they'll be posted online soon. Uh, so they mentioned a bunch of places that are posting or having online events for how to repair things. Oh. Like repair, like, like, re like fix things. Yeah. Okay. So I'll, I can send a link to you guys when I find, when I find one. Awesome. And there's also grants available too. What what are the grants for? It, just in the general topic, I, I I was half listening. I just basically netted, "Wow, this is good information." You know what I mean? Yeah, good resource. Right. And that they were definitely still doing things. So, do we have enough as a call? I think so. Who are we missing? It's Susie, right? Susie. Um, oh, and Myra. Myra. We have a quorum. Yeah, okay. Um, I was hoping. Have you got any more public comments? Or are you finished? Was that it, Carol? That's it. Thank you. Okay. okay. Well, just a quick. I was on thank the you. town council meeting and I want to thank uh, incredible work on the clean lake. That's awesome. And in general. <laughs> yeah, it was a good presentation, Claire. Did a good job. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so that item three on the agenda is, um, sorry, item two and three. Wouldn't, can we do it with the votes with the people we have? One. Okay. All right. Um, so I have to do a roll call vote. I'm just going to remind everyone this is recorded. I don't know if you were told when you logged in that it was recorded, but it is a recorded session. Um, so did everybody have an opportunity to, to read the minutes and is there any comments or changes? I see no, see no nodding. Okay. So I'm, I'm just going to do it. I'll just do the um, Julie. Yes. Robin? Yes. Um, Mary? Yes. Claire? Yep. And me, yes. Uh, Tom? I'm Ed. going to abstain since I was not a member of the committee. Yep. Okay. Thank you. And actually, I'm just going to take a moment, actually, mm -hmm. just in case everybody doesn't know who Tom is. I'm looking at him. I know him very well. So I'm sorry mm -hmm. about that. Tom, do you want to just introduce yourself? Sure. Uh, I'm Tom Betcher. I'm one of the um, Wakefield Light uh, Commissioners. Uh, I was just appointed to be your liaison. Uh, happy to, to be here. Uh, I do want to you know, um, say thank you for to Jen Calais, uh, who uh, took up the torch this past year. Uh, she, uh, she did a phenomenal job um, reporting into us and being your liaison. Um, I've been kind of on the periphery of all of the, you, know, you may or may not know me, of kind of the sustainability um, things that happen here in town, and which is one of the reasons why I you know, um, ran to get on the gas and light board. So happy to answer any questions or anything, but happy to be here and be your liaison for the next year. Glad to have you, Tom. Yes, welcome. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, Tom. We'll um, give you a proper hello when uh, we, we see you in person. <laughs> yes. <laughs> right. <laughs> Whenever that may be. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, hi, Susie. <clears throat> hi, Myra. Sure, I'm sorry, I'm late. Hey. Oh, no problem. Oh, it's springtime. It's so hard to remember that it's 7 o'clock when it's still light out. <laughs> yep. You're outside gardening. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, item three on the agenda as per our policy and procedure. We will, um, the committee shall elect the chairperson, vice chair, and secretary. Um, we do, as, our, as per our policy procedure, we said we do this every May. So 
I put it in the agenda. So I think it's clear that we are going to do it tonight. Um, but I'm not sure how we do this. <laughs> mm -hmm. Exactly. So, um, do we, Julie or Susie, do we have to do a motion to pick someone? Just, or? Do you have to do a motion? I just wanted to just clarify. I think our policy and procedures say that we pick them from the community appointed members. Is that right? It, it does, yes. Okay. From the, from the four of us. Right. Yes. So, yes. Um, so the others vote, but. Right. The other votes you... vote on the, on yeah. them, but it's the public members, four public okay. members of me, Mary, Robin, and Myla. So as the one who is not a mem member voted on, I am perfectly happy with the current uh, situation. Um, but I don't know if those of you who are in those roles are <laughs> happy to maintain those positions. I, I could that's a good way putting not it. the non-chair role if I if you know if you all want to break, I'm happy to um, be a little bit less of a slacker, but I'm happy to continue with the current situation if uh, if you all are happy in your roles. Okay. Uh, you can document that nicer than that, Robin. <laughs> Um, yes. Okay. So is that a motion? I'm happy with my position. If unless anybody else would like to be chairperson, I'm happy to continue for another year. I'm not offering to be chair or vice chair. So, are you happy to be secretary? You're you're doing an excellent job. I, I'm comfortable maintaining the role if people find that I'm doing an adequate job. Oh, you, yeah, you're doing a great job. Thank you. Thanks for. Mary. Mary's on mute. You're on yeah, mute. I realized I was mute. <laughs> it's bedtime, so it got a little loud, so I had to manage through. Um, I'm, ha I'm very happy uh, maintaining the role. If folks would like me to continue, I think Rob is doing a phenomenal job, so um, would not want to change that. Um, so okay. by Great. all means. So, so can we use Myra's as, as the motion? Mm -hmm. I motion okay. to uh, to continue with our current situation. A second. 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 And th uh, that was Julie. Uh, so ro roll call. Mary. We have to vote on each position individually, or the motion. We can do it as slate. We can do it as yeah. a slate. I think. Okay. okay. Yes. Robin. Uh, except yes, I. Uh, Tom. Aye. Claire. Aye. Myra. Aye. Susie. Yes. And Julie. Yes. And I, Rob. Yeah. So I'm just doing it in order of the screen, as you see it on the screen. So <laughs> it makes it easy. Good as any. Yeah. All right. Great. Thanks. Okay. Um, so I, item four on the agenda is. Um, the Earth Day slideshow. So we got we got a few. Sophie, you were awesome. I loved your photo. Yours was best. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. The picture of Thank you and your family you. was funny. That was that was great. Yes. Um, so that that was posted on our website, um, and uh, uh, has everybody had the opportunity to watch it? Okay. It's cute. Let's play it's it. Cute. Yeah. Can you play it? Uh, ooh. I can if you want to share. Um, can you'd I share have to screen? find it on the website. And then I can find it. Hold on. Let's see. Okay. Let's see who can find it first. I think I might. Does it have sound? If it has sound, just make sure you click the share audio when you're doing screen share. Oh, the, the audio is just music overlay, so right. it's no, no loss. Unless you love the music. but if I have. Do you have it? Do you, oh, I have it. Uh, yeah, I you have got it. it. So just share your screen. Yeah. Uh, okay. Hold on. Bottom. Oh, yep. Yeah. Yeah, got it. Oh, okay. You cannot see it yet. Yeah. Oh, okay. It gives you different options. Is the right thing? There you go. That's looking like it's happening. Yep. Oh, yeah. got it, got it. Can you see that? Yep. Yeah. Oh, okay. Looks good. Okay. How many 
many minutes is it? Two minutes. Okay. <laughs> yeah, it's really quick. I yeah. couldn't remember because I watched it when it first came out. <laughs> I let her do whatever she wanted. That's Love right. It. That's my daughter Mia, for those who don't know. Cute. I remember that picture, Rob. Yeah. <laughs> She's in our Girl Scout troop. It's a great poem she did. It's impressive. Oh, God. <laughs> hey. <laughs> That's cute. We doubled up that with schoolwork as well. Brilliant. <laughs> Gotta make efficiencies. Good yeah. thinking. Yep. Very nice. Um, That's so good. I'm glad we made it happen. And yeah. Well, thank you, you know, to everybody who did that. Yeah. That's all great. the chaos in the world right now. And so W, nice. uh, the, the TV station did. They put that together in no time. Yeah. Was, yeah. They, Barbara was really great, really helpful. Yeah. So. Good. Well, now we know sort of the, the resources, right, <laughs> Myra, for next time. <laughs> yeah. I feel like I, you know, I feel like I did little of it. And, you know, I don't think we got it into, into the item. And so I don't know if we still would want to follow up with them and see if they'd want to print some of those uh, images. Um, but. Um, well, I, I would bet they would. They're looking for content, I bet. Oh, I, I would agree. Yeah, so maybe we should send some in. Just send... Especially Sophie's. Right. Yeah. S send some of the images. See if they'll post some. Yeah. We'll put, that, put that as a follow-up. Is there someone who volunteered to, to follow up with that? I, I feel like that was on me to begin with, so I will follow up on it. Okay. I can share the drive with all the pictures in. I downloaded them from the, okay. from the emails. So, you can okay. even just share the drive with them and let them pick what they want. As long as yeah. they oh, okay. use the names, okay. they would do that, I'm sure. I don't think we gave Jen Betcher the credit for her poem in there, her haiku, so we just have to add that in. Oh, yeah, we can check that. Um, okay, uh, so next on the agenda, item five is trash, plastic bags, and composting. Um, obviously, with everything going on now, there's a, a lot of plastic bags back, unfortunately. And um, the the Greenwood School is actually trying to collect them. They're trying to make a bench for their new play area. And um, so I was going to see whether, so they have agreed to kind of collect them, but of course the schools aren't open, so they know where to collect them. Right, oh. Susie. So I was wondering whether maybe we as a committee want to send a letter to Town Hall, to Steve, and ask whether um, there's other places, maybe at the yard and or the Town Hall or other places around town. Because there are so many bags coming out of Shaw's and other stores right now. Like I'm drowning in them again. Um, which I know I could probably do. But you can't bring your own. Can right. someone explain to me why they're plastic bags I mean what is the thought around that because I don't know that there's much is there really any evidence that coronavirus none that I've heard of and I'm in healthcare. I mean, right there was an article think... and said somewhere today that said no there's no there, there's no proof but it's also the governor's order and I don't think with everything else going on I don't think we're going to be able to 
to, to fight the governor's order. So I think the best we can do is, and I don't know quite why they went to plastic instead of staying with paper. paper. Maybe it was a cost thing. I don't really know. Um, some, some stores like some stores are using paper. So I don't know. I was thinking maybe just to raise the awareness, we could kind of just at least be collecting and then maybe giving tips about other things you can do. Like I keep needing to tell them just throw the stuff back into the cart and I'll put it in my bag when I get to the car, but I always get distracted and forget. Actually, my son's doing this in the shop. Nice. <laughs> so, Julie, I don't, yeah. so I know I was trying to drop something off for the food pantry. Yeah. And even that is difficult. Like there were three places you could do it. Shaw's, the police station, which right. when I walked up to the police station door, it says, don't come into the lobby unless it's an emergency. So I was like, oh, okay, really? okay, dropping off food isn't an emergency, so I'm not doing that. And then there's a third place that I can't even remember what it was. So I feel like there's not even town buildings that are oh. open to be able to do drop-offs, which I think makes this that much more complicated if we were trying to do something to collect them for the Greenwood it almost feels like it has to be like a person's home, like, you know, and, right. And I don't think you want to get into that business. I just, I don't know where we would do it. Um, I was thinking like, maybe on the front. I mean, I know at the front of town hall, they have some, they have different mailboxes and bins for like masks and things like that. Maybe they could just put the big recycling bins out there. Maybe, I just think maybe we just ask them to think about it. Yeah. Um, I'm pretty sure that the yard is open 24, mm -hmm. I mean, it's open all the time. Maybe there's a place there. Yeah. Um, is there a covered spot? I'd just be wary, like if it's just out open in the yard. Well, I was thinking <laughs> again, maybe one, one or two of the big um, blue bins, people put them in there. Um, How is the Greenwood School taking plastic bags and transferring that into a bench? So there's a program that we started for the Big Purge. Um, we reached out to it's the people who make the Trex um, yeah. patio stuff. Yeah. So they have these. This like they have a community program, and if you collect, it's a lot of bags. But honestly, um, it's like if you collect, I don't know, fifty pounds of bags or something, you send it in. And they send you a bench. They turn it in. Oh. So the PTO was super excited to do it around the big purge, mm -hmm. um, and that was before there was kind of this influx of bags again. So. Um, they still want to pursue it, but of course, like Susie said, it's tough to find any public that's open right now. That might change in the next week or so. We're, we're still waiting to hear from the governor. But I just thought, and I don't think we have to have all the answers. I thought maybe we could just, if this is something that this committee could bring to the DPW and the town and see whether we can brainstorm. And do we, do you have a sense or do we, do we have a sense of when the, so the, and I know it's in the governor's order to have, you know, you can't bring your own bags, but when he rescinds the order, which will happen presumably eventually, does that, does that mean that our local? Yes. Yeah, back our, effect? yeah. But I don't know how long that's going to be because, you know, I don't know what part of the res of rescinding this will be right. part of. You know, we could also do other things, not just kind of recycling. We could also kind of, send a letter to Shaw's and just ask them to have paper instead of plastic. They don't have to comply with us. Um, you know, we could do other kind of just public outreach. Um, yeah. Farmlands uh, has both. They still give bag, paper bags, but they do, do they? have the thin plastic bags as, out, uh, as well. Yeah, it just seems to be whoever you get will choose one or the other. Uh, any delivery ask, service like that, I, that I always ask for paper yeah. when I'm in wherever I am, I ask for paper. I think mm -hmm. part of the problem is the delivery services tend to default to the plastic. Uh, and, and you can't ask, but I, uh, when I see people delivering stuff, I feel like I see it mostly in plastic. Well, BJ's just gives you a cardboard box and throws everything in. I kind of like that. <laughs> Um, but yeah. it's a delivery service. And then same with, um, Whole Foods. I think it's, I think at least Whole mostly. Foods paper. Yeah. Yeah. Even great. now. Right. Yeah. Um, 
And I don't know whether Shaw's has an option. I actually haven't even looked there. So maybe it's not as big a problem as, as we think it is. I just thought it might be something to think about. But I like the idea of the, the bench and kind of reusing. That's that's great. If um, I, I don't know who thought of that, but that's a great idea. Because uh, obviously you can't, you know, there's, there's always going to be other towns or, you know, you can, there's some means of like obtaining plastic bags that you don't want. And if there's a place for them um, systematically to take them to, I think that's a great idea. I just don't know where we would put it um, and what type of container and how would we, how would we communicate it? Cause I think there is, there, there is probably people who would like that option to be able to just take their, you know, 50 plastic bags that they've saved, saved up and, and be able to do something purposeful with them that is not going to harm the environment or end up on the beach or something like that. So I, I really like the idea. Um, I don't know how we'd get, get it out there. We could put it on the website, I guess we could, I don't think you get Shaw's to host one again and we just pick it up and save it somewhere like DPW building or something. Mm -hmm. And then is there a container that, you know, we can sort of just purchase a custom right. sticker for, you know, I think right. it's as simple as that. I actually think it's a really good idea. Town Hall is such a central place right now um, with voting and everything that that's probably the best place or at Shaw's. Yeah. Or at Shaw's, the place that gives them out, <laughs> takes yeah, them back. Right. Yeah. All right. Well, I just wanted to say, have to ask the committee whether they thought it was something because I think if we use our name to kind of ask for it, we might be able to to make some progress on it. And I just thought it was something that's COVID related that maybe we could do this time. Yeah, to mitigate the reverse effects that are happening. Right. So I said, just draft up a letter and send it to farmland and and shores. Well, let's let's um. Let's maybe, let's talk to Steve and then, yeah, maybe draft something. I don't want to kind of go after businesses. Maybe there's a way to do it through town hall. Okay. All right. I don't think we even have to vote. I just wanted to discuss it. Yeah. yeah. I, mean, I think the pit could be a great option. I think people are going there um, and it's open. Um, you know, if we could have like a covered bin, whether, you know, I don't know if the, the plastic bags have to be in any kind of quality when they're um, done, but. Yeah. <coughs> Julie, if I remember correctly, uh, in addition to like grocery bags, you said that they're collecting the plastic bag that cereal comes in and crackers yes. and things like that. So I've actually been able to avoid a lot of the grocery bags because I just take the cart to my car and then I load my reusable bags. Yeah. But I still am getting the sleeves yeah. of plastic, you know. The, so yeah, so these are, the, it been, includes bread bags, cereal bags, all those other bags that you, oh. yeah. Yeah, so my collection is all getting... That unmanageable awesome yeah mine is too <laughs> okay let's we're gonna find a solution okay. at the very least i feel like we should be advertising the fact that there is go there will be a place right yes. for those kinds of bags to go right. we still need to figure it out but start right. saving them yeah. i had no idea oh. you guys were talking yeah. about like bread bags and, and that kind of stuff. I wasn't thinking that either. So that's a good point. There, there's, yeah. there, there's a ton of stuff still out there. Yep. I, that's okay. awesome. Yeah. Predominantly yeah, we, we can put a list together. I have information on it and a key question to ask in regards to the person who picks um, the company it goes to is whether or not um, the, some don't accept, accept the ones that are crinkle and some only accept the ones that like it's stretchy and yeah. that's it so yeah we'll, right, we'll, we'll get into that we'll get we'll to get the, the guidelines yeah. thank you i was um, on top of this when we were doing the big purge and then when that dropped off i kind of lost but now i feel like there's bags everywhere again yeah so we put trash and trash on there as well there was a lot of discussion there has been discussion at the town town council about the trash cost going up and we were talking about composting and stuff earlier before all this started. So I didn't know if we had any updates on that, Claire, that you could maybe could share on the composting. Well, you're on mute there. Yeah, you're on mute, Claire. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry about that. I thought I was on my phone audio. 
Um, can you hear me now? Yeah. <laughs> yes. Perfect. <laughs> All right. So for composting bins, we have rescheduled um, our all of our dates that were originally postponed it's going to be july 17th now so that program will be ongoing people can purchase up until july 7th when's the textile starting claire the launch date is june 15th okay. i'm not going to have any updates for the dpw if i just do them now <laughs> oh right okay <laughs> oh we'll see right okay that's probably, I don't know, that's all I had. Yeah, okay. Uh, we'll move on to item four, uh, item six then, discussion. Um, student liaisons, who's up, uh, Eddie or Sophie, have you got anything you'd like to add? Anything's going on? I don't think Sunrise? so, no. no. No, there's not much happening right now. No. Anything going on with the climate strike? What are you guys working on? Um, we're kind of in like an off period right now, um, because, uh, Earth Day just happened. Well, I mean, I guess it was like a couple of weeks at this point, but we're working on like ways to onboard and like, um, kind of focus on marginalized communities more so than we have in the past. So we're like working on the best way to go about doing that. Um, so nothing much happening right now, but yeah. No. no. Okay. Thanks. Um, oh, sorry. I just lost the screen. Um, school. Susie, do you have anything you want to add? No. Sir. no. Not really. I mean, yeah. at the end of the day, at this point, it's all about, you know, focusing on supporting teachers and families through the end of the year, trying to figure out what the heck next year looks like. Um, and cutting our budget, <laughs> which, right. you know, is not good um, and not going to be, it's, it's just not going to be easy um, at all. Um, and, you know, the positions that we were putting in place were things that were, we really felt like were needed. We were asking the town to really invest in the schools more so than finance committee even wanted to begin with. And, um, and now we're going to have to back off that. And so like, I, I don't know what that means for some of the initiatives that we've talked about, you know, specifically with Danielle around the trays and, um, you know, trying to get composting um, and food rescue happening at the middle school and high school. And, you know, I just, I don't, I just don't know. And I, I think it's really um, difficult to ask Doug and the leadership community at the schools to do any more than they're already doing. These guys are just working around the clock and are exhausted. Um, and and yeah. so I, I'm having a difficult time because I just don't feel like we should be asking them anymore <laughs> for, for anything. But, but you also, like, I also think it's in the, I think you guys, you guys have laid some really good groundwork that when we kind of come, when they are able to come up for air, I think Danielle knows what, what we want to have happen. And she knows, um, I think she has ideas about how to get there. Um, I think rehiring Danielle, which happened at two meetings ago, we approved kind of the, the rehiring of her, I think was really important, obviously, to have somebody that is um, forward thinking in her, um, you know, in the way that she's doing her job from a sustainability perspective, I think will go a long way. It may not happen as fast as we would like it to, um, but I think we at least have the right person in place for when the time is, is there. Um, but it, it's, it is hard for me to think when I know the level of what these guys are kind of up against, it's, it's hard for me to think about how we have um, sustainability conversations. Um, yeah. Cause it's just, it's just, it's overwhelming. Susie, two questions. I wish I had better Who's news Danielle? <laughs> Danielle is the Who, food services. Okay, thank you. And the then food services. Uh, it is Danielle, right, Rob? Uh, it is, yeah. Okay. <laughs> I was like, I hope I have her yeah. name right. Um, I've That's, only met her one time, but she's phenomenal. But she's the food services um, uh, coordinator. Yeah, I guess I coordinator. But she's we share her with Reading, 
So it's like, it's a shared position um, that Reading and, and we um, share the expense for her and then she oversees food services in both school districts. And then maybe this is a question for Rob and maybe Susie. The, um, the grants that the elementary schools got to help support the compost, does that expire or can we apply the grant value to the fall? How does that work? So we, we paid for the composting through the end of the year. Right. Are they, are they so, they're not collecting right now, right? No, that was put on hold that first week the school was out. So they're just waiting to hear back from us if it goes back, start back in the fall. So the so, bins are just sitting there. We still have a contract. We still have money with them. So we sort of prepaid. Is that how it works? Yeah. Okay. So that's good. So then. Yeah. You think they'll push out the, they'll push out kind of the number of weeks that we purchased with them? Yes. Yeah. I have, good. Yeah. I, I had spoken to them and that's fine. They're just going to leave it on hold until we know what was going on. Because it started off, we just put it on hold for three weeks and then it changed obviously. And then, so um, they're just waiting to hear. Um, and everything else was purchased. The coolers and the fridges, they're all in place. So they'll just sit there until we can hopefully restart the food rescue programs. Question on the, um, does the general populace know, like if they sign up with um, Black Earth, their referral fee can be um, pushed towards the schools? Is that something that we've advertised? We haven't, we're not able to actually advertise Black Earth compost. Okay, so even though Same they're now. doing the school, so, all right. Right, they're just a provider for the school. We don't need an RFP yeah. for them, it's, just, it's a small amount. So, I think the PTOs have um, shared that information. Okay. Yeah, they do have it on their website. I think Greenwood when... did. Oh, did they? Yeah. They did it themselves. Oh, great. And they are they are doing the um, community garden. Black Earth, they're, they're doing that. So the, I saw that, that people are posting. They've, they've uh, been building the boxes this uh, last week. So, and they'll be filling them. So hopefully that will give them some publicity. Um, So, uh, oh, Julie, do you have anything you want? Yeah, I don't, I don't have a lot. Um, Rob did a great job presenting to the town council two meetings ago, I guess it was, two or three meetings ago. Oh, so, yeah. So, yeah, no, that was good. Um, and a lot of positive feedback for everything that we're doing. So, thank you, everybody. Um, yeah, and I don't, we, we had planned on doing a lot around Earth Day at town council, but obviously the COVID emergency has taken precedent. We're just gonna, just like Susie said, just so much on people's plates that we're, it's gonna be tough to get, um, you know, to get the attention for this um, right now. So um, we did have a, a vote on, you know, keeping an economic development position in our budget. And I'm hoping that, you know, that's considering that kind of be an economic development person. And I'm hoping that you know, eventually as we recover, we bring kind of sustainability issues into economic development and small mm -hmm. business dialogues. But that's a long-term play. Yeah. And is there any update with the, well, it's between you and Tom, I get the uh, solar going on the pumping station? Oh, yep. uh, I, will, I will give an update on that now. Um, hold on, I'll share my desktop here real quick. Yeah. Went up today. See the, wow. Yeah, so it went online today. Um, so both sides of the uh, roof were covered in, in panels. So meters are, um, in place and operational today. Of course, you know, um, we're forecasted for rain for the next couple of, of days. Uh, but that, you know, so any electricity um, generated that that particular building utilizes. Um, will be offset, you know, while the sun is shining and then everything will uh, be sold back to the utility crediting that um, bill. So 
it's a win-win for both rate payers and also you know uh, taxpayers as, as well because that helps offset um, the electrical That's usage right, at yes. the pumping station. Um, other um, updates. Is there um, any public, um, public dashboard? Public um, dashboard. No, there's no public dashboard on that. Um, I can find out if there, you know, if that's something that we can easily publish or not. Um, I asked for that to be included. I know maybe kind of a retro. It should be pretty easy to include something yeah. like that and incorporate it into our sustainability dashboard. Yep. That I clear. I'm not sure where that stands, but there'll be something yep. in there. Um, I had really said since we couldn't do it on the schools that I think it's I. Yeah. Um, that I, I feel pretty strongly that we give access to schools and tours to schools if that's possible. But again, that's gonna be kind of a longer term play. Yeah. Um, and then also continuing with uh, solar updates. Um, so our current uh, solar funding for residential and small commercial and in industrial, um, we've you know uh, gone through most of the grant money that um, we were given. Uh, so we have, you know, capacity for two to three more projects, um, which is phenomenal. We went through that. Um, there was a, a lot of demand, um, more than almost quadrupled the amount of solar that we have here in town. Uh, the good news is not official, um, but we didn't, in, it, in our initial round of funding, we didn't get all of the funds that we had asked for. Uh, it looks like we will get the additional funds uh, that we did ask for in the second round, and that will um, support you know eight to ten more installations in in town. Uh, so it is uh, ongoing there. Oh, nice. Uh, so any questions around solar or anything? All right. Um, EV stations. Uh, I know that Jen's uh, you know said that those were online. Unfortunately, the last one to go online, the DC Fast in front of Bank of America, literally went online, what, two to three days before the lockdown happened. Um, but even with that, the lockdown and everything that's going on, uh, I was looking at the dashboard um, and we've had five to six uh, DC Fast um, charges there. So, you know, obviously with everything going on, the utilization uh, really dropped off at all of the stations, um, especially with that field with um, that parking lot closed. Um, something that we're looking at, and I don't know if it comes from the utility or from this body around, you know, making an exception to parking at the vets field for, for charging, you know, depending on what happens on the 18th um, going forward. I brought, I brought it up at town council and asked that it be considered. Okay, awesome. Yeah, plan. that was something that we, we discussed um, the other night as well, if they, you know, we could carve out, you know, the barrel area. Uh, looking at the dashboard, incidentally, there have been a few charges um, since that parking lot's been closed. So, <laughs> you know, um, I, you know, I'll, I'll close my eyes to that. <laughs> um, if they're not walking uh, the lake, it's okay. Yeah, there you go. You know, if they're sitting in their car charging, I, I have personally have no problem with it, but. Um, the energy audits, uh, our contractor has started up virtual audits. So if um, residents want to do an initial audit, uh, it, it can be conducted virtu virtually. And then also, you know, as some of our uh, incentive and rebate programs require a closing audit to prove that you've done your work, um, that can all be held virtually now as well. So those programs are still going on. And I'll open it up to any questions that I didn't cover. Tom, how would an initial audit be done virtually? What, what does that look like? So the um, company is sent, sends out a questionnaire um, for you to fill out. Uh, and then the part of that questionnaire asks about technology that you have, um, you know, whether or not you have a mobile device that uh, you can do a lot of that. They're doing, you know, Zoom or FaceTime type calls and asking you to walk around um, to specific areas, point your camera to that, you know, video camera to that and asking, you know, specific questions uh, around that. Um, while not as comprehensive as a um, you know in-person audit, it's you know what they're you know best that they can do at this point. 
Um, as part of that, they're still mailing out, you know, as your uh, audit, you do get uh, some LED light bulbs, they're mail mailing those out uh, to you as well. Um, so it, at least the program can go forward. You can get your initial audit done. That checks the box for, you know, if you are doing any sort of work that you can go forward and, and do that work. Um, the contractor is working on, um, you know, putting in place policies and procedures to do uh, in person uh, going forward, but that has not been finalized. So we don't have all the details around what that will look like at this time. I, from personal experience, I had the follow up audit virtually, and it was a matter of me just holding my phone and showing them the work that we had claimed to be done, showing them the extent of it. And they're like, yep, you verified it was done. And then we filled out paperwork. So it was awesome. way better efficient because it took two minutes and they would have driven, you know, half hour each way or something. So I had a limited scope, but it, uh, it worked out well. And then Courage from, others. Uh, oh, go ahead. I was going to say, I encourage others to do it. Absolutely. And then from a processing standpoint, you know, the utility, we do process all those ourselves, you know, and it helps, um, you know, drive the dollars further. Um, our customer support staff are all now working remotely. Actually, you know, in some instances, I think, you know, um, more efficiently, uh, the department put in a uh, virtual program um, for the call call takers and those types of stuff. So it has to actually feed them up to actually start work on processing those rebates and, and credits to your um, utility bill. Great. Great, thanks, Tom. Um, oh. Claire, do you have any updates? All right, so, yeah, just a couple. So as mentioned, some more recycling kicking off on June 15th. Composting will be now July 17th, and the rain barrel distribution will now be July 16th. We're working on all of our COVID-related um, measures, so that way we'll make it as safe as possible. But those distribution dates are expected to stay in place, and we'll just add additional safety protocols to each of those events. Um, this will be our first year submitting for a recycling dividends program, which is due in June. And we are just about halfway through that application now. And we'll be applying for the MVP action grant, which is due on June 11th. Um, we're working on the one that we presented with the Clean Lake Committee at Town Council on Monday night. And we'll also be resubmitting the vulnerable populations and greenhouse gas emissions um, assessments that we worked on through, through this committee. Oh, and Julie, you also mentioned the dashboard. I actually got a first look at our dashboard this oh, okay. Monday. So I'll send that over to you. Maybe Tom, we could, the three of us can take a look at that, see if there's any way we can work in some of the solar information and get that situated there as well. Awesome. That's it for me. Thanks. Um, do you want to just add about the Clean Lake Committee, the, that presentation, yeah. Claire? Do you want to sure, it? sure. Yeah, so Bill, Bree, and I presented to town council regarding the Clean Lake Committee on Monday night. We essentially walked through everything that we, where we're at now, the research that we've conducted, and what we learned from previous committees. Um, we talked about our project prioritization list. We have about 25 projects identified through Clean Lake Committee and our public works department. Um, and we just prioritized and we're working based off of grant money and other sources of funding. So that way we have guaranteed, uh, guaranteed pass forward. Um, so we're moving forward with the Lake Quanta Palette Main Streets project currently through Clean Lake Committee. Rob, did I miss anything? I don't, no, that is great, thanks. Um, the that stuff is on the website as well. The Clean Lake Committee has yeah. a website now with the map of everything that's going on and the list and stuff. Yeah, Rob did a great job of putting together our original map and all of our project lists. And Katie and our engineering department just went through and put it all through GIS. So now it's nice and fancy. It looks sharp, yeah, it looks good. Yeah, she did a good job. Guys, does that include what's going on down at the end of the lake i know um oh my goodness joe the friends of like <laughs> joe spoke to us about it a while ago yeah so the i i honestly my husband asked me tonight he's like what is going on down there and i'm like 
mm, something about watershed. <laughs> And, and I don't even know if that's right because I don't feel like the newspaper has really talked about it in any like substance. I feel like they talked about it a while ago, possibly when you guys got the funding. But I now that there's stuff actually happening down there at the end of the lake, I wish that they would start talking about what exactly is happening. Um, that's a great point. Yeah, so that's the Gertrude Spaulding project. I haven't seen any publications on it either. I'll talk to Joe and see if there's any way for us to put out some information. I know that the Friends of Lake Quantic, it's through them, it's through FLLQ, and their newsletter did just come out. I personally haven't read it yet, so I can't speak to whether or not it was included. Um, but I'll verify, and that's a great opportunity for us to at least showcase what's going on down there. But yeah. we are doing a watershed approach through Clean Lake Committee, and that's everything that we're covering. It's all going to be more watershed approach versus dredging or any in-lake um, projects. Got it. Okay. Thank you. Great. Thanks, Claire. Um, any other sure. business or events? Um, so we've got approval for the farmer's market to move forward. Uh, on Monday night, so that's going to start June twentieth. Um, we're working on the website now, making an update. It will be smaller. There'll be no music tent. There'll be no kids tents. No dogs. No kids. Um, we have a list, unfortunately. No, no kids. We're asking just one member of the household to come. It's going to be wow. come in, pick up your stuff, and get out. The first three weeks is going to be a we're having a three-tier approach. The first three weeks is only going to be pickup only. So we're, help, we're working with the farmers to help streamline that. So they're going to be on a website so you can order anything you need on there and you can just, you better come down, grab your box and go. Oh, and then that's good. After that, we're hoping to open it up to be able to come in. You won't be able to touch the products. You still better pick up your, um, your, or, your online orders, but there will be an opportunity to look and buy stuff at the market as well. And on that second tier, and we're Rob, hoping to is it going to be less people. vendors? Sorry, is it less yes. vendors? Yeah. yeah, to start, it's just going to be 10. Um, the main farmers, the bread shop, dairy, and meat and eggs. So it's the basic, basic if core. You, if you order across vendors, will they put it all in one box for you? No. I don't, I don't think so. We are trying to figure out if we can maybe have a pickup point for some of the other vendors that we won't have tents there and they can maybe put it all in one pile and then that's one pickup point for some of the artisans or some other stuff, but that's not in the first tier. We're not, we're not there yet. We will still be offering the SNAP program. Um, we have support from... Um, um, uh, three banks. I forget the name of the three banks now. But uh, the Wakefield Co-op. Um, Robin, can you help me here? <laughs> I forget. Oh, Salem Five and um, what? Savings Bank. They'll all be spot. They'll all be sponsors. We're going to use that money for the SNAP program, and we're going to need some additional signage, sanitizer, roping. We have to rope off the area. So. We have to buy some equipment before we can start. But. Rob, question on yeah. uh, if parking at Vets Field isn't opened up, um, uh, I'm assuming you've thought about that. And, yeah, you know, uh, we're gonna, we're going to be open. We're going to have to have some extra volunteers, and they're going to be standing at certain points. So we're trying to figure that out right now. Um, the, at the town council, they said we could have as much space as we needed. We're still only we're still only going to have ten vendors to start with. Um, we've, um, we've the big difference is we're not saying parking because you're coming and kind of collecting, so right. it'll be obvious that we're not encouraging walkers around the lake. Yeah, yeah. So obviously signage is going to be key there, which we're trying to work on now. So, so um, and do so. Does anybody have any questions about the farmers market? Does anybody want to volunteer? You know I'll be there, Rob. Yeah, I know you will, Robin. Thank you. Um, we will be looking for some extra volunteers because we are going to have to police 
we have to control the amount of people coming in and out. So we have to figure that out as well. So, so you're, you guys are going to be counting kind of the capacity for people to go in and then leave? Yes. Yeah. There's, there's guidelines on how many people per square feet of yep. even for the market of what we're going to be allowed. So, um, but by not having, by, by pickup only, that's going to stop people just congregating and hanging out. So yeah, hopefully it'll be pretty quick. Mm -hmm. uh, for the volunteer stuff, do you guys have sign up? sheets for that already exist for kind of signing up or are you looking for kind of long-term volunteers that are going to spend all day every saturday there not all day but you know what i mean so we do have last year we did have a volunteer sign up and we will have one again we we normally ask um for half and half like some people will come and pick set up some people will help come and take take stuff down People will run the um, markets, manager's tent for, was it two hours or at a time, I think? Yeah, we use, Susie, we use vol uh, volunteer match. And so that makes it clear the different shifts. So setup okay. was an hour, then there's two two hour shifts at a table and then there's cleanup. So, and you could sign up for as many or, you know, so you could do just an hour or you could do multiple shifts. So to recognize that not everyone has six hours to dedicate. Okay. And how do you get kind of in, how do you get access to that? that? That's on the website. We're just currently just modifying the website, making it a lot uh, more user friendly from the phone to be able to order f from the, from the farmers. Yep. And also we're making the um, volunteer page easier. Okay. Cool. So that, that's been worked on right now. So hopefully next week or so that should be, should be out. Um, next, um, Julie mentioned we, we uh, did the presentation on. Oh no, uh, town. Sorry, town meeting is June eighth, but I just put that on there. But that could change. It's just an event coming up potentially. But I don't think there's any been any more updates. No, we don't have confirmation yet. Yeah, and I'm not sure of the opening date, but the community garden, as we talked about earlier, is being built right now. I don't know if there's a, a launch date for that. I think they were aiming for June 1st. I don't, I haven't heard whether or not that will get pushed back, but they did, a, they had, a, I think they had more, more applicants for plots than they had. So they did a lottery, which was cool. And they, you know, they, they did a great job managing it. And then I think that there were some additional people who got plots. Like I, I heard Maureen, Maureen was not initially selected, but she, um, she texted me to say she got one, which means that there were some, some, you know, additional spots open. There were some waiting lists. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, uh, but I, yeah. I, you know, I entered the lotteries and I was selected in the lottery. So I, uh, but I haven't heard about the final date. I mean, we haven't heard that it's been pushed back, but they had said they thought maybe June 1st, much later than that. And it makes it hard to grow. So I, yeah. I feel like it might be, Sort of go, no go, but it's cool that they're being built. Yeah. Uh, I don't know, Julie. Have, have you know any more? Okay. I don't know anything else. No. I do. I know that you know for that and for the solar, we had to have them up and running by June thirtieth for the state funding, and because the budgets are just so decimated because of COVID, there was no flexibility in that. So thankfully, we got both done will get reimbursed from the state. So that was the important awesome. kind of awesome. milestone. Yeah. Oh, that's great. Um, any matters not anticipated? Anybody, anything they'd like to bring up, put on the agenda for next month? Uh, I have two things. Um, one's kind of an agenda and I, I've talked to Julia about this and I'm not sure where we go um, to kind of push this, but I would like to see um, EV ready codes uh, start being pushed into our, you know, um, building codes for, you know, um, multi-family type oh. um, structures that are building here in town. So say what, you know, what are, say, you know, if you have more than six residents, um, you know, you need to either 
install EV charging or the infrastructure to facilitate EV charging. And there's been a bunch of studies done and uh, a bunch of other places have put this, you know, it's, you know, factors of, you know, four to 10 X cheaper to, you know, during building to put the conduit in, you know, wiring. And it's just oh, yeah. a matter of, you know, installing the, the chargers after the, the date, you know, Rob, you, you, you know that. So, um, so I'd like to see the town start adopting uh, some, you know, EV ready code. And then, you know, obviously stretch codes as well. Um, so kind of I'd like to see this body plus, you know, town council kind of push on that. Um, and then just another, you know, kind of tidbit, I should, probably should have included this in the updates. Um, I don't know if you guys know that, you know, we have a grid storage battery um, and just kind of show, showcasing some of the benefits. So this past month, um, you know, we hit the peak and, you know, by able to discharge that battery during the peak, uh, we saved um, 26K in um, transmission and generation costs. Um, the lifetime of the battery, which is now we're around 14 months, um, we're about um, just short of 500K in, in savings um, that that battery has done. So, and that means that, you know, we're taking potentially cleaner power and charging that battery in low peak periods and that type of stuff. Great. Nice. Yeah, let's, let's just start adding kind of Thanks the stretch code stuff to the agenda. Yeah, okay. Julie, you, yeah, you just mentioned said, the stretch question. code before. Oh. Well, we have to look at the stretch code, right, for green communities. Um, so we were thinking November, I don't you know, again, COVID, I just don't know what kind of world and to be pushing things like star foam and, and stretch codes. And, um, I, I think there's going to be a lot of arguments made. I mean, I kind of working on an article right now with somebody that, you know, I think this, I think COVID has shown us that we need to be resilient and that municipalities are kind of the front line of resilience whether there's funding for something like that in budgets that are just being crushed, I don't know. It's going to depend whether any federal or state money comes down to things like that, I think. So it's, it's going to be a real balance, I think, sustainability and, and budgets going forward. So, But there's a lot of good economic um, arguments to be made for all these things as well. We just have to make them kind of at the right time and tone, I think. Julie, weren't you looking to have someone from DEP do a presentation on what it means to be a green community? Do, do I remember yes. that correctly? And we were going to do it for Earth Day. Okay, so that just, was one of the things tabled? Yeah. That was one of the things tabled because of all the emergency meetings. Um, so he's still ready to go. Um, I, I figured, you know, let's see how we get through this town meeting and then, you know, and how the recovery goes. Get him back in. Um, Addie and Sophie, I wondered whether, and I didn't talk to you guys about this beforehand, but is there anything that you think we could do for the seniors who <laughs> are, I don't know, I mean, I was thinking it's kind of corny, but like plant a tree for every senior, you know, that's not going to get a graduation or something like that. I don't know. Might be corny. But I think about there's anything we can do. Yeah, no, I think it's important to like think about them and understand their situation in this. I mean, that's a good idea. I don't know if there's anything else you could do sustainable, like sustainable yeah. for them. I don't know. Think about it. We don't have to decide right now, but you know, they're they're actually. I think Rob was saying, you know, may, we have this new tree program, and maybe there, you know, maybe there's a. We, I don't know. There's a pretty big class, right? What, 200 people? Like, maybe there's a little area where it becomes the class of 2020, you know, park or forest or something. I don't know. It's a completely random idea, but I thought I'd throw it out there. <laughs> Bedtime in our house. I don't know if you can tell. <laughs> But Sydney just there was also we talked about uh, we did we we also have trees on the Clink Lake Committee for the watershed area, and Claire has it for the MVP projects as well. Um, 
So I'm not expecting the seniors to see just be like, woohoo, they're planting a tree for me, but you know, maybe right. in time. <laughs> uh. I was going to say, I wonder if there was like a garden, like an area in one of those places that was like the class of 2020s garden that just like recognized that, you know, and, you know, I, I'm just thinking, you know, could every kid bring, you know, a rock and there's a rock, each kid has a rock that's in a, you know, like a, a, I don't even know what you call those, like little rock garden, right? Um, yeah. It would, it would be nice with all the different things that are going on in town if they're, even at the, even at JJ Round where the, um, where the, the gardens are going to go, like, is there a place that could be just for the class of 2020 as a special place where they could leave something I'm thinking a painted rock is probably yeah. the best we're going to be able to do, right? Because you're not going to be able to plant a tree for every for every student. Right. But it would be nice to No, but you could plant house. you could plant 20 trees for the class of 20, yeah. right? Yeah. And then do the rock garden around it, and each of the students does a rock that is, you know, symbolizes hope in a time of historical pandemic. I, some some kind of a hybrid. The rock garden is obviously much more logistically easier, yeah. um, but I do like the idea of a tree which is resilient through time, and it'll be there um, much longer. I think rock gardens, you know, the paint tends tends to come off over time, but at least the tree, maybe twenty trees. I don't know how much twenty trees would cost or who would fund it, but I think that would be really symbolic. A, a, a where would they go to? Like, where, you know, where would we want to see this symbol of um, resilience? Not sure. So trees are thousands of dollars each. Yeah. Right, like three thousand, right? Something like that. Something like that. So that's a lot of money. Yeah. Sorry, I didn't want to poo poo, but oh no no no, 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 no. And, 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 I, and I don't want to just unilaterally do this, but maybe I don't know. Is Doug having conversations with the students and with their advisors? You know, maybe there's some. I don't there's, know. There's Again, definitely lots I hate of to throw more at them. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I don't. I think. Um, I I think if we could come up with even if it was just a rock garden that was going to sit in, if we could find a spot where they don't have to figure out the spot, but we, you know, and we plant some stuff and it's a it's a garden that's in honor of the the class of 2020 and then there's a place for rocks I think I think we would want to tell them or talk to the class officers of whether right. like hey what do you guys even think of this idea would would students paint a rock <laughs> and leave it and would they you know does that even feel like something that's meaningful like I certainly could take that um to to at least gauge the idea of like but I think they would want us to organize it because I think there's a lot that they're also trying to organize the parents and some of the administrators of different ways that the that the students are going to be recognized. We'd have to get on that pretty quick. Um, and I don't know if there's really kind of a, a space that would be available right away for us to be able to put those rocks in um, if the students were able to, to, to pull it together. Oh, awesome. If there's anything. Okay, and I'll I'll check with the student officers. Okay. All right. I'm done with random ideas now. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, if there's nothing else, um, I have to do a roll roll call for the adjourn of the meeting, right? For the end of the meeting as well. Yep. I think so. Um, Mary. What am I supposed to say? Hi. Yes. Say so yes. Yes. Yeah. Just say yes say or I. Yes. I think. Okay, yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, Robin. Yes. Tom. Hi. Uh, Myra. She's on mute. Yeah, mute. Good. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> Claire. Yeah. Susie. Yes. Julie. Yes. Rob, all right. Thanks, guys. Um, yeah, right. next, the me next meeting is June 11th at the same time, so I'll, I'll send some stuff out before then. But Thank you. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thanks. 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 Stay Thank safe. Everyone. Bye. Bye. Take care.